Um, praise the Lord. I'm back again. And yes, once again, this is about Kanye's born again confession. It, it, it saddens me that so many Christians are basically saying that they don't believe that he is sincere um, in what he is confessing and saying. And they basically attribute their reasoning upon the things that were done in Kanye's past. Now that goes to show that a person who is more focused on what he's done in the past and not what he is currently stating, especially confessing that Jesus is Lord, goes to show you that a lot of people don't know that when you are in Christ, you are a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away and all things become new. That means that when you're in the hands of Jesus, when he's your Lord and Savior, what you've done in the past doesn't matter anymore. Those things have been wiped clean as far as he's concerned. I'm talking about as far as Jesus is concerned. But for some reason, us human beings always like to pull up the past. I believe there's a scripture in Proverbs that says that um, the unwise man is always digging up things of the past. Um, and, and we fail to realize that in Christ, all things are new. We need to focus on what Christ is doing in his life right now and how he's allowing himself to be surrendered and yielded unto God's hand. Okay, because see, even in some of his songs, you know, like I said yesterday, he was talking about how the Christians are judging him and calling him crazy. What are you smoking? Because you're now professing Christ or oh, he's crazy. I don't care about what the world is saying. The world is not going to understand. Those who are not saved, they're not going to understand it anyway. But for the church to be so judgmental, it's not of God. So I, I, I want us to look at, uh, we know Paul who was once saw how he persecuted Christians, okay? He persecuted Christians. He thought that was the right thing to do. I, I like to take that example, and I'm going to read this scripture in the book of Acts. This was after Paul's conversion, because it's so similar to, uh, to Kanye and what's taking place right now. So let me read this. This is Acts chapter 9, starting at verse, uh, starting at verse, let's see. I'm going to go to verse... Where is it at? Okay. Yeah, verse 19. Okay, so after Paul got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and was healed, it says, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. And immediately, he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he indeed is the Son of God. Doesn't that sound like Kanye? Huh? Immediately after his conversion, you know, when we first get saved, we're so excited. We have a zeal. We want to tell everybody that Jesus is Lord and that we're saved. And it's a passion that we have. It's that zeal that we have to tell people that Jesus is Lord. Even though we don't have much knowledge of the word of God because we're babes in Christ when we first come to Christ, there's still that driving force because of the transformation that has taken place in one's life. So it says he immediately began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying he indeed is the son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among the Jews, among Jesus followers in Jerusalem? They asked. And did he come here to arrest them and to take them in chains to the leading priests? In other words, they said they were thinking about what he had done in the past. And yes, our physical man is going to. Think about, man, this person used to do this and do that. And now they're doing this. So that's normal. But to continue in that unbelief as so much to say that the person is not saved, that's going too far. So it says Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. And the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. After a while... Some of the Jews plotted 
together to kill him. They wanted to kill Paul. I can imagine that some people in the enemy camp wants to kill Kanye because of his transformation from the side of darkness into light. That's why we got to pray for him because the devil is mad. The devil is mad that he had such a, you know, he had this, he has this huge following and now he's turning people's heart to God. He's turning people's heart to Jesus. Let me continue reading so I don't be so long. It says, they were watching for him night and day at the city gate so they could murder him. But Saul was told about their plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. That's what a lot of Christians, they're doubting Kanye's conversion. You shouldn't doubt it. You should pray for him. And being a believer, you haven't experienced the same thing at one point in time. Be hopeful and positive about it, that he is truly being changed by God and the Holy Spirit instead of pushing him away and rejecting him. So it says, then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Kanye is boldly doing this. You, you can't tell me that somebody who hates Jesus is going to proclaim the name of Jesus the way that he's been doing in his album and in his certain, the Sunday services and in the interviews and all those things. It says, so Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. He debated with some of the Greek speaking Jews, but they tried to murder him. When the believers heard about this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus, his hometown. Now get this. 31 says the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria. And it became stronger as the believers lived in fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. So we see here in verse 31 that there was peace in those cities because Paul had now been converted and was no longer persecu uh, persecuting Christians. And people were turning to Jesus because they see that that man who once used to persecute Christians is now confessing that Jesus is Lord. They're seeing his life and how it's changed and the persecution begin to die down and more were added to the body of Christ. We should encourage Kanye, hallelujah. Glory to God while he's on this Christian journey and not beat him over the head. Glory to God. I wanted to share this because I, I just saw, you know, the comparison between him and, 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 and Paul. And I, I want him to be encouraged because, like I said yesterday, he has a platform where many people can be reached. Now, I want to say this before I go. If you are one who says that Kanye is not saved because he's a Trump supporter, you have a serious issue. You have an issue with Trump. You have an issue probably with yourself and you're prejudiced because of that. OK, now I'm going to say this, and this is definitely going to cause a lot of people to unfriend me and probably not follow me. But guess what? It doesn't matter because I know who I am and I know that I'm walking the spirit. Guess what? 2016, I voted for President Donald Trump. Why? Because of the things that he stood for. Me as a believer, glory to God. And definitely now we can see a lot of things that as a Christian, that we should definitely think twice about who we vote for. Hallelujah. The Christian is going to be facing a lot of persecution in these days and times. So we need somebody in office who's going to stand for Christian values. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Glory to God. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but be wise and don't remain in a state of ignorance and in a state of, or, or, or should I say, just staying with the crowd because it seems like everybody in the crowd is going a certain way. Be led of the Holy Spirit in everything that you do. Be led of the Holy Spirit and the word of God in everything that you do. 
even when I come on here and, and encourage people to do certain things or I give my point of view, always look to the word of God and the Holy Spirit, okay? Don't rely on man, but rely in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, okay? Glory to God. Be encouraged. And I, I pray that you take what I've said today to heart in a good way and ponder upon it. Don't be angry. Hallelujah. But just evaluate the whole ordeal, okay? Because God is up to something. Amen. Hallelujah. And you got to be keen in the spirit and not be led by media and, and, and everything else. But know for yourself. Because this, this walk is an intimate walk. It's an intimate walk. Glory to God. So God bless you all. I love you all. Hallelujah. And I hope that you're praying for me because I'm praying for you. Glory to God.